Alright, so this is kind of an idea I've had way back for the longest time, but I could never really get it off the ground. Like, mentally, it's a cool idea. It's just a really fun, cool idea. At the same time, it's like, how the fuck am I going to do this? <laughs> and not make it stupid, you know? Um, and it's actually kind of funny, because I actually got this idea from a question I had way back when I did, like, I think a King Kong or a Legend of Korra Q&A. And &A. I can't remember who asked that question, but yeah. So, yeah, as you can see, it's a crossover idea between Kong and Legend of Korra. Um, when you think about it, you know, Skull Island, could, you know, seems like a, a possible, especially the new, for the new film, the 2017 film, it seems like a place and creatures that you could see in the Avatar Legend of Korra universe. So I kind of thought to myself, huh, yeah, Skull Island and Kong and everything else there could exist, honestly. You could see creatures like that existing in this world, honestly. You could see all these different creatures existing on, in the Legend of Korra universe, pretty much. You could, <laughs> you could see that. Now, the big thing with this is, is that there were two kind of ideas that I, two kind of plot ideas that I had, and both of which involve Varric. <laughs> so the first idea, so I'm going to go over the first idea, uh, was that the initial idea was kind of set around um, during the three-year gap between books three and four. And the idea was that during the time of, um, you know, during the Earth, you know, Kruvira and the rest of the Earth Empire trying to, um, trying to, uh, you, know, re you know, rebuild the Earth Kingdom, what happens is that um, Varric com you know, Varric comes across a a map to an ancient island, and he at the time is like, "Hey, I want to, you know, I haven't done movers in a while. This could be my big com my big mover comeback, to, you know, to do a to do a movie, you know, a big propaganda film if this works." So that's how he kind of spins it to Kuvira. So the rest of them, in um, so the rest of the group goes out to, you know, heads out to Skull Island, which in this in this kind of universe, I kind of said it, that it's a little, that it's somewhere off the coast of the Earth, of the, like, southern seas of the Earth Kingdom. Like, it's very, like, southwest oceans of the, or southeast, southwest. <laughs> Geography was not my strong suit, people. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's far off the coast of, uh, of, um, far in the oceans, uh, almost near unexplored territories of, um, the Earth Kingdom seas. So, Kuvira and the rest of them, and you know, take a you know, take a uh, battleship there, go to Skull Island, and um, they encounter the Skull Islanders. Now you're probably thinking, so in this universe, would Skull Islanders be benders? I was kind of thinking that they wouldn't be benders, and that when they see Kuvira and Bolin and the others start bending, they're like, oh, <laughs> fuck, what the fuck we doing? So. Um, they go there. They kind of they kind of declare that this will be a territory for the Earth for the Earth Kingdom now, you know, for the new Earth Kingdom, and um, they intend to leave. However, just before they they try to leave, uh, Julie gets herself captured by the Skull Islanders and is offered as a sacrifice to Kong. So, yeah, this turn goes from a mess uh, from a mess <laughs> from a very messy situation to a very bad situation real fast. So. Yeah, the uh, Kuvira, Bolin, Varric, and a whole lot of them go over the island while Varric's trying to, you know, get him, you know, shoot this stuff. And he, and yeah, they do rescue Julie. And, but however, the whole time you're probably thinking, well, Varric's probably the Carl Denham here, so he's probably gonna, you know, convince, you know, he's gonna try to take Kong back to, you know, Republic City or some shit like that. Well, the idea for both of them um, is that very understands, unlike Carl Denham, that if that if Kong broke loose, he would be in a mountain of debt and lawsuits. So rather than deal with that, he would just be better off filming it. And he understands, hey, if I, you know, hey, I'm not going to try to bring this thing back, even if I could. What if it broke out? <laughs> you know, what if this if this monkey this giant ape exists? You know, what if it breaks out? Then I'm up shit creek without a paddle. So that was that's kind of uh, Varric's kind of train of thought is that he's kind of like yeah that's a you know that'd be cool to see I ain't gonna take it home <laughs> but of course at, um, Kuvira kind of twists his arm and has the Earth the Earth Kingdom soldiers uh, capture Kong and take him to Republic City to show that the Earth Kingdom's might but however Kuvira's kind of got an alternate alter, alternative motive 
being that she's going to find, you know, she's going to have some of her people secretly release Kong and have him wreak havoc in Republic City and show how Republic City and its protectors cannot do shit and the Avatar is not there to help them. So, yeah, it's kind of like, hey, we're the Earth Empire and we're going to, you know, we're, we, <laughs> we're going to, we captured this beast and now we're going to kill it. So that's kind of how it goes. That it was one big ploy. They kill Kong, and the Earth King, the Earth, the Kuvira's army gets even more support than it did before. So that was kind of the idea in the first in the first idea. The second idea is set after Book Three, like maybe I'd say about six to eight months afterwards. And again, it's Varric who comes up with the idea. He comes up with the map, and he's kind of like, hey, he brings back Team, A he brings together Team Avatar back, and he's like, hey guys. I got a great idea for all of us to hang out together. I found this map about this this island, this lost island outside of the Earth Kingdom seas, and we're gonna go look for it, and we're gonna find a giant monster to <laughs> to, to film. Um, now, unlike the other idea with uh, Skull Island, you know, with um, Kuvira, this one took solely on Skull Island. Like Kong never goes back to Republic City, um, but on there, in that one. Again, it's Julie being captured by, you know, being, you know, being the bride of Kong. And, but this time around, it's a more smaller group. It's just Korra, Asami, Mako, Lin, uh, Bolin, Opal. When I say small group, I mean mostly Team Avatar members. And a few people working for Varric. <laughs> so, yeah, that one took more on Skull Island and followed Kong, uh, followed Kong and Julie, and as well as everyone kind of encountering the monsters on Skull Island. Which are kind of, like I kind of thought the I'm, um, I kind of had this idea where there there would be some dinosaurs on there, but it, and they would just think, oh, these are just monsters we've never seen before. But I also had ideas for like ancient monsters, you know, ancient animals that existed during like the time period of Avatar One, you know, animals that hadn't been seen since Avatar's uh, Avatar One's existence, um, also existing on the island. And Kong is an animal that has been um, Kong's like this ancient animal. You know, he's almost considered, like, again, on Skull Island, he's considered almost like a god that, you know, there's been rumors about him. And even, the, even like, he's a myth, it, the myth of Kong is o almost older than the Avatar. That's how kind of I've wanted to spin is that the myth of Kong is older than, you know, in some stories of the Avatar. Now, would that mean that Kong is older than, you know, than the Avatar cycle? No, it just means that Kong's species has been around longer than the Avatar cycle, and they've been held up as, like, these great, um, I, you know, these great, you know, these great monsters, more or less, in this kind of continuity. So that was kind of the, so that's kind of the idea. Now, for design-wise of Kong, I kind of had in my head, it's like, um, something along the lines of, like, the, I, yeah, the 76 Kong from the 1976 movie, as well as, um, the Toho Kong, where he's big and he's walking upright, and he's powerful, but a very ape-like, you know, a very gorilla-like um, head design, very much like um, the the 06 movie. So that was kind of the idea. He's kind of again, he's an he's an amalgam Kong. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was pretty much the idea I had for a Kong Korra story. But yeah, it's all it, like I've always said. It's a really cool idea, and I've got a cool idea for plot points. How do I do this? <laughs> That was, um, that's kind of the problem with a lot of these stories, and it's kind of why I kind of enjoy, um, sharing with you, because they're all really cool ideas, it's just that I can't, um, I can't really put them all into one big war, you know, a worded story. It's kind of the tragedy of it all. So, but hey, who knows, maybe someone will come along and think this is a cool idea and write it for themselves, who knows. Anyway, so, that's kind of the, uh, the whole story right there. So you guys tell me, what do you guys think of a Legend of Kong and, uh, excuse me, Le Legend of Korra and King Kong crossover? Do you think it would be cool? Um, do you guys like the ideas? Do you guys hate the ideas? And if you could write your own Kong Korra story, how would you go about doing it? Would you have Kong in Republic City, or would you have it, you know, some other form? Um, really curious to see what you guys have to say about this one, and once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later.